Today we are going to give what I believe to be some really good solid advice for preppers that live in apartments of how they can garden for after SHTF. So let's jump right into it. Hey folks, if you are looking to buy bang sticks or freedom dispensers or parts for said freedom dispensers or actual emergency food that will give you actual nutrients while still lasting 25 years, then check out the affiliate links that will be down below in the description box and also in the pinned comment. Now let's get on with the video. Okay, for several years now, I have been pretty hardcore practicing SHTF gardening, which means I garden without store-bought insecticides, fertilizers, and stuff like that. And then also with my time in this community, you know, not too long ago, me and other preppers had a collaboration with the Urban Prepper. Hey, great video, go a uh, great channel, go check him out. But in this collaboration, and in other videos that I've done, I have seen the question come up from a lot of preppers that live in apartments, which is, you know, questioning and wondering how can they grow food for after SHTF? How can they grow food to feed them for when the grocery stores go bare? And every time that I see that question posed by a prepper that lives in an apartment, I see a lot of well-meaning responses from other preppers that say, hey, you can grow food in buckets and you can grow herbs and spices and stuff like that on your, win on your window seals, on your window ledges. But folks, in this video, I'm going to give you some cold, hard facts that you just might not like, but don't despair. I'm going to give you some really solid alternatives in this video. The reality is, is that it takes, in, in order to grow enough food to actually feed you, it takes land to be able to produce enough food to actually keep you from starving to death. And unfortunately, most apartments, you just don't have that much land that it takes to actually grow enough food to actually feed you should the grocery stores grow bare. Greens and herbs, they, while they do have nutrients in them, they just don't have enough calories in them to actually keep you alive. You just, in reality is, is you just, you're not going to have enough window ledges in your apartment to grow the amount of greens and herbs that it would take to actually keep you alive. And then if you have a good sized courtyard, how would you actually grow that food in a populated area that would keep people from stealing that food. And as far as growing food in buckets go, while some vegetables do pretty good growing in, in a bucket, again, you just not, you're not going to have enough space for the amount of buckets that it would take for you to actually feed yourself. And then, even if you do are, are able to grow a decent amount of food in buckets at your apartment, how are you going to replenish that soil every year? So if you are in an apartment dwelling prepper, I'm not trying to be a party pooper here, but I'm not, I don't want to feed you fluff. I don't want to be a disservice to you. So here is what I would do if I were an apartment dwelling prepper is instead of hoping that I'd be able to grow my food after SHTF, what I would do is I would invest in uh, a lot of long-term storage dried goods or freeze-dried goods or canned foods, whatever it is that you prefer, but I would actually invest in that type of food that could be stored for 20, 25 years. And then the gardening that I would do around my apartment would be herbs and spices and stuff like that that wouldn't actually be to feed me because I would never be able to grow enough calories to keep me alive after SHTF, but what those herbs and spices that I did, what they would, what I, that I would grow, their job, their function would be to supplement my, my food that I have stockpiled. They would add flavor to the food. They would add extra nutrients that would help keep you in fighting shape after SHTF. Again, they would not be to actually try to give enough calories to keep me alive because you can, you will probably almost for certain not be able to, to do that in an apartment after SHTF, but they would be to supplement 
and give extra nutrients and to flavor your, your actual food for after SHTF. And let me repeat that. If I lived in an apartment, I would, again, I would not try to make gardening as my main source of food for after SHTF. I would invest in long-term storage foods and then use my window seals and any other areas that I could get sun into my, inside of my apartment to grow the herbs and spices to add the extra nutrients and the flavors to that food I already have stockpiled. Now let me add this little caveat here. If I lived in an apartment and if I already had my large closet or another room already filled with long-term storage food and I already had my window seals, my window ledges with herbs and spices growing on them, and then if I had like a little balcony area or something like that at my apartment, then I would also try growing uh, food in buckets too. Because again, everything that you grow is about adding variety to your food that you already have stockpiled. So not too long ago, I grew uh, sweet potatoes in buckets and it actually worked out pretty decent. So um, while you probably couldn't grow 50 buckets of sweet potatoes in your apartment, if you can grow five or six buckets of them and get, you know, three, four, five sweet potatoes per bucket, that will be sweet potatoes throughout the year. Again, to give you just a little bit more variety and those extra nutrients, etc. Now, real quick, don't click off the video just yet because we've got many more points that we need to make here. But why don't you do me a favor? Why don't you comment below with some of your tips of what you think would be great for apartment dwelling preppers of how they can feed themselves for after SHTF. And now back to the video. If I were an apartment dwelling prepper, another thing that I would look at besides growing herbs and stuff like that is also what's called sprouting seeds. And if you're not familiar with what sprouting seeds are, a really simplified explanation of it is where you soak seeds in water and then drain them and then a few days later they actually start sprouting and once they start sprouting and they get you know an inch or two inches in length they actually start becoming packed with nutrients and vitamins and stuff like that that's really good for your body again they're not going to give enough calories to keep you alive over an extended period of time but these are some really good nutri nutrients and stuff like that that you can produce in small amount of spaces and uh, that doesn't require sunlight either. That's just another option there that you can use to give you emergency nutrients to help keep you alive and to also supplement your food that you already have stockpiled. And another huge thing that you have to remember if you do plan on growing herbs or anything like that in your apartment after SHTF is that you got to learn how to grow using heirloom seeds that way you can save those seeds every year to replant your herbs and spices the following year so it's important that you don't just have knowledge of heirloom seeds but you also have practice at it so that you actually learn hands-on how to do it so you don't fail at it after shtf Again, the cold hard truth is that most apartments are just not going to give you the amount of space that is needed to actually grow enough food to keep you alive after SHTF. And my belief is that you should plan to use the space that you do have available to grow herbs and spices that will complement the long-term storage food that you should have stockpiled for after SHTF. And to learn about gardening with and harvesting heirloom seeds, which will be a lifesaver for after SHTF, then click on the video that should be appearing on the screen just about now to learn that powerful knowledge. Anyways, folks, that is enough internet for today. It is time to go train. And folks, if you made it this far, hey, thank you very much for watching. And I pray that you have a good night.